are we at on telephone? Elko still there? Yeah, we're here in Vegas. And they're in Vegas. We're here in Elko. Excellent. Uh, Commissioner Vogler on the line yet? I know he said he had some issues. He might be uh, a little while yet. Let's see. All right, we're going to thinking we might uh, get a pretty long agenda left. We'll probably end up taking a lunch break sometime afternoon. We did start pretty early this morning. Probably have to today. We'll plan on that. So let's move on with item 15 or item 15 discussion history explanation development of dream tag regulation uh, program officer three marine hunger informational staff will provide a brief update on the development of dream tag regulation uh, we had something I mean last I remember this was September 2009 when we talked about it um, so what's happened Bill Lake, uh, for the record, Maureen Hollinger, Nevada Department of Wildlife License Office. Um, like the agenda item states, a brief update on the development of the Dream Tag regulation. Department staff has not initiated development on regulatory language for the Dream Tag program. In 2009, there was three statutes put in place for the Dream Tag program, 502, 219, 222, and 225. There's lots of moving parts when you read those statute you know those, those statutes and what I'll do right now is just list some things that will need to be accomplished in addition to whatever the department's participation in getting a dream tag program in place um, would need to be determined so um, NRS 502-219 provides for the issuance of dream tags and it the way it reads it's one tag for for 50 or more tags that were available in the previous year so historically if you look at that that could be one mule deer tag, one elk tag, one antelope tag, and one Nelson bighorn sheep tag. Also in statute, there's NRS 502-225, which directs that an advisory board on dream tags must be created. And that advisory board is appointed by the governor, one person per each of these, um, the governor, the majority leader of the Senate, the Speaker of the Assembly, the Advisory Board of Natural Resources, and the Vice Chair of the Commission. Each one of those has to appoint a member to the Advisory Board of, on Dream Tags. And then that same statute also lists out what the terms are for those Advisory Board members. Vice and Chairman some of other the Commission of this Commission? Uh, this commission. I think it's this commission. this commission. That would be an interpretation I'm not willing to make. I would, we'd probably have to have that told to us okay. for clarification. Also part of NRS is um, that there would be need to be a contract between the nonprofit organization and a, the private entity approved by the department that will act as the agent and sell the chances to win the dream tags. Also, um, pursuant to NRS 502-222, there's a resource stamp. So, and the departments must determine what the form of that stamp is. Um, and then we'd have to implement that stamp as part of this program. And it's a $10 stamp. Then, uh, pursuant to NRS 502-225, staff will need to be provided by the department to the advisory board on dream tags to the extent that is allowed by legislative appropriation. And then uh, um, we'd also, throughout this whole process, these are all things that I think you can see would have to go on pretty much at the same time you know, to get this up and running. There's lots of moving parts. The framework on the Dream Tag raffle, raffle process would have to be determined, and that could be determined from what's in the legislation um, testimony in the legislative sessions and meeting with the principal parties involved with the development of the program and all parties that are listed in these statute, I believe. So those that basic framework on how the raffle is to occur still, you know, needs to be um, ironed out. And then um, annual regulation regarding uh, eligibility, method of take, unit groups, and the application period and deadline for purchase of the raffle tickets. All those uh, process procedural things for the public to participate would, would need to be identified. So in a nutshell, that's the laundry list. There's no any one order to it, um, but to get a Dream Tag program in place. Um, those are the things that have been identified, some of which would probably be regulatory at some point, you know, we, but those are the things that we'd have to identify. So whether it's regulation or if there's enough direction in statute. 
So. Okay, so, and the process to get all of those things accomplished would have to be initiated. Clearly, I mean, most of those things are not to be initiated at the commission level. Those are initiated outside of the department. Now, some of those things are outside of the department and outside of the commission, too. So, you know, the advisory board, when you look at the original language, it was soon as practical practicable after the statute was in place, the advisory board was to be selected. I don't know if that occurred. Okay, and if it was, that was never. Um, could, so, can we get a copy of that? This is just my notes. Oh, I mean, um, whatever. Th I mean, those were really good points. Sorry. I almost wish that was. Well, it's. I pretty much pulled them from the statute. So well, it's NRS. Um, so, yeah, NRS 502-219-222. And 225. All right. Um, you know, I was and I was told that you know that the commission had been been given the authority to establish trim tag, but chose not to do so. And you know, and, the, and that was one of these things that came up. And I'm like, whoa, there's a whole bunch of other things that have to happen before we can choose to or not to or. I Whatever. So I'm. I think some of that stems from the prior legislative session. Yeah. Um, where the commission at that time, in minutes, if you go back and read, opposed the Dream Tag process when it was in in yeah. that legislative session. So that might be where that, those comments came from. So. Yeah. Different commission, different days, many different members, and but since then we've taken no action. I've just just wanted to throw that out here that you know we've never been, a been able to really talk about it and this is very consistent and I think it's interesting your report here I mean it's completely consistent with the report that was given to us back in 2009 due to some longer term issues similar actions for the dream tag being delayed when we we're talking about Silver State. Silver State went forward and this did not and those long term issues are still the same long term issues basically as they were two years ago and those long-term issues are? Uh, we were not explained that. I'm just reading off the written report that was issued by Endow back. Uh, and it was due to some longer-term issues. It was talking about, okay, exception of the dream tag. Endow direct requested a working group evaluate and implement the processes to be put these items into regulation. Talking about Silver State. Due to some longer-term issues, similar actions for the dream tag are being delayed. I don't know what those issues are. I mean, that was... I don't know, somebody wrote it, wasn't somebody in staff wrote that, but I, it sounds like there's still longer term issues still going on. Okay, and those are clearly identified. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, thanks. Uh, you know, this, this commission uh, adopts regulations, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a law. It was passed in the legislature. We were opposed to Dream Tag, but the bill was passed, so it's a law. And we adopted uh, the uh, Silver State tag, but there was nothing brought to us on the Dream tag. And I don't know where we have to start or what goes. And we got Greg Smith in the audience, and his wife is concerned, uh, Debbie Smith, and maybe he could clarify what he would propose we do or where this thing starts. I don't know where we start, but we were never given any, any uh regulation and and it seems like as marine testified it's a multi-fast where does this thing start uh the law says we're supposed to do a dream tag issue one tag for every 50 tags there's uh in the public and somebody's got to start this process and bring it to us so we can do a regulation because as far as i'm concerned uh even though i was opposed to it it's a law and we should do something we did the silver state which was in the same bill and we did the Silver State, we didn't do the Dream Tag, and I don't know how we start, uh, who does what, but somebody's got to bring a regulation to us uh, or start the process so we can uh, do what the law says, and I, I don't know how we do that, who starts it, but I don't, the commission doesn't start drawing regulations if I do know that, and so I don't know if Greg wants to address that or not, but somebody's got to address where we start. I may speak to okay. that. May I, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. Um, the current language actually states the commission may establish a program, so that gives you some authority <coughs> to initiate it if you'd like to. So um, I'll leave it at that. So to initiate it, and in, in yeah. do any suggestions in what fashion? 
I'm just direction from the commission to the department. Anything that's in state law, we need to do. Um, that's that's my general direction. Probably have to put it on the agenda then and give the department. I guess we've got to direct them to set up the dream tag, and it probably should be agenda sized. I'll ask the AG that if we probably be on the agenda before we can direct them to do that, uh, because it's a complicated process the way the bill's written, and uh, it still is. And whatever it takes to do, we should do. Let's put it on the agenda for a uh, action item to go forward or not. My understanding was that there was a nonprofit organization that had to be formed and for them to accept these tags. And if, if that's not in place, then there wasn't any reason for us to act. That was where I thought the thing sat. Um, but that was that's just my perception so there is one. all right that okay um commissioner pearl yeah uh, the the bill that had the dream tag provision in it was ab 246 we adopted regulations that were brought to us by staff with respect to both the um uh, the silver state tag and the youth, not, not youth, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, apprentice license. And those were adopted since the last session and have been in place. And in fact, we will have a Silver State tag hunt this year. Very successful deal, I, I'm led to believe, as far as the money is concerned. But the general process is that we shouldn't have to put it on the agenda to direct the department to come to us on a regulation. But if that's what it takes, then perhaps that's what we should, should ought to do and ask the department to come forth with, I don't think you have to agendize it to, to ask the department to develop the proper regulations to implement the, um, the, um, I'll make comment. Uh, the dream tag um, legislation as it was passed. Yeah, we never. Uh, to my knowledge, we never requested the department to bring forth the you know, Silver State. I mean, they just do that because it's law. Um, and the commission now is significantly different than well, uh, one other different point, than the last couple of years. Ago. One sorry. other point, Mr. Continue. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cavan's correct. It does involve a 501c3, a nonprofit uh, association or organization that is named in the statute. It's a specific um, organization that has been in place for quite some time. And they met with the staff at one time uh, and talked to them about what they would need and what had to happen for this dream tag to, to come to fruition. And as I understand it, there were some sticking points, such as the length of the proposed they'd have to have a contract with the state. Um, the amount uh, and some other issues like uh, how you uh, do do things with regard to uh, the use of uh, uh, the department's program on, on the draw system. And uh, again, some other issues that were unresolved. And that's why, through no fault of the department, so far as I know, that it was never again brought up and uh, became an issue because we are looking at AB 322 this session. And if this 501c3, I, my, I've never approached me or I don't know if they've approached uh, you last year when you're chairman, but about any of this and I was would have hoped that they would have uh, approached us, put it on the agenda if they, if they could bring it forward. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, let me, let me clarify this. I've got in front of me Assembly Bill 246, the enrolled version. And it's got the Apprentice Bill, it's got the Silver State, it's got the Dream. And I'm going to read to you. Section 4, the Commission shall establish a program for the issue of additional big game tags known as the Dream Tag. It doesn't say may, Marine. It says shall. So therefore, I think the Department should have went forward and instigated this for us because it says shall. And we're ready, willing, and able to adopt a regulation but it's the same as Silver State. It said the Silver State shall be done, and it said this shall be done, 
and it was never done. And so I can't say I can't sit and blame any commission for not doing it. And I think we don't need to put on the agenda because it's got shell. And here is the 5133 Community Foundation of West Nevada. It's already set up in the bill. And I, we already have the 51C3 set up that's going to do the work according to the bill. So in my, in my respect, it says shall, and I don't know who starts it, but it's, somebody's got it. Mr. Chairman, Section four, may go I ahead. speak to Morning. that, please? Let, let, I think we have okay. it. Okay. Um, oftentimes, what is in the bill is not what is enacted, and actually the statute says the commission may establish. I can't hear. Um, excuse me. Um, oftentimes, what is in the bill is not the language that is adopted into statute, and the statute actually reads the commission may, so they change the shall to may. How did they get that? The, this is the enrolled version. After passage, after it was adopted, after that, the assembly and the senate. They can't hear you. Agree. They can't hear you. Please this is the bring up our expert. So what New is referring to, after passage, the two houses had a concurrent committee. After that, in another bill, in SB 411, they amended this bill and made the language may. Oh boy. So it is very complicated. The Assembly Natural Resources Committee staff is working on the history at the request of Chairwoman Maggie Carlton. I would suggest that we request legislative history from her or legal counsel, Brandy Stevenson, so that we can get the, you know, what what's the next steps? Well, regardless of whether it's, I mean, clearly it must be may or ch and has been shall and whatever it may, may be i mean we've been under the impression that it was a you know it would be brought to us at some point by staff i mean and we were directly st and it was directly stated that endow direct request working group evaluate for the silver state but due to longer term issues similar actions would not be are being delayed and we were kind of explained briefly then what the those longer term issues were that there were some longer term issues and that, my knowledge, they've never been resolved. So if they've been resolved, then bring it on. We'd like to hear it, like to see it. It's a whole new commission now, it was a few years ago. So, uh, anyways, law is law, we follow it. Go ahead. And, I, and there's some other questions on this about the, uh, the proprietary of the. Uh, the tag draw that belongs to the state is proprietary and they'd have to enter into a contract with the uh, system consultant or wherever they want to do it because that, that software belongs to the state and they'd have to pay for it and I guess some arrangements have been made already but uh, the, we, we should determine the cost to sell the software. We sold the software to another state and I think uh, they would have to buy it as a separate entity and then have to uh, do a contract to do that and we should be aware of that also however that might go down but these are in the details <clears throat> that have to be worked out and I think putting it on the agenda to if we got to do the if we got to give the department direction and put on the agenda as an action item then we should do that okay usually don't but we could in this case all right thank for the question on 15 and then we'll move on 15a Questions on this? Nothing else? Nothing on the phone? All right. 15A. Um, I didn't really know what I'm getting into here, but what, do you just give what uh, involvement? Uh, for the record, Don Sefton from Systems Consultants. And um, that the topic's pretty broad, I guess, as to what I'm supposed to do. But what I would propose is to give you a brief background and history of my involvement. Uh, with the dream tag and then um, let you ask questions okay. uh, the history of this was first I was contacted by Judy Karen and I wish I don't think she's here I wish she was because I'm going to be putting words in her mouth and she may want to give me a six-armed Shiva bitch slapping for what I put in her mouth here but I'm gonna go ahead and do it and uh, I'll apologize to her later I was contacted by her in 2009 or before the 2009 session and she told me that um, she was exploring a dream tag explained how it would work but the basic fundamental issue was that it was 
an unlimited number of chances for an individual as opposed to the silver state tag where you have one shot at each species. So much like a lottery that you might go to, you can go in and buy one ticket for $5 or you might buy 100 tickets for $500 and increase your odds. And she said that she ultimately believed that the software and the draw effort would go to bid, but she needed to collect initial information for a feasibility and fiscal impact to provide for the bill. And I was told that a 501c would be associated with the dream tag and they would have no startup money. And yet they would want to have a first year effort. And they, she asked me if my firm and or my competitors do work up front and recover the costs out of operational fees. And I said that coincidentally it was becoming the norm in my business as opposed to the exception. And I gave the example when we built the uh, Arizona Game and Fish, um, they, they uh, title and register, or they're a non-title state, but they register boats like Nevada does. And uh, they had us build a system for them and uh, they insisted that we recover all costs out of our operational fees, that there'd be no programming up front for it. And that that was what we were seeing upcoming in Florida and other states. Uh, a lot of states fis uh, pinched by the fiscal constraints were unable to put capital budgets together. And I think California did the same thing for, for their licensing system. Said charge what you want on a per transaction basis, but you're building it up front, you're fielding the equipment, we can't afford to do it. So um, I said, you know, yeah, we, had, we were doing it. And in fact, um, she asked how we, would we uh, propose to accomplish it if we did it. And I said, well, in, I think it's 2004, and if it becomes important, I'll get you the exact date. I was approached by the Bear River Refuge, which is on the northeast side of Salt Lake, and asked if I could help them with a lottery. They had a uh, one-off hand engraved by a noted artist, Satori Shotgun, that they decided rather than uh, just have a uh, silent auction or have a open bid auction that they'd have a lottery for it. They thought they could make more money. And uh, they were talking about if they were lucky, they might get $100,000. And as Chairman uh, or Vice Chairman Lint had pointed out, uh, the, the system that Nevada uses and that uh, Utah purchased, they purchased it for uh, $75,000. And if I were to take a system which was inappropriate for that kind of draw, because there's a lot of mismatch between what was developed for Nevada and what was needed for the Bear River draw. Um, I'd basically have to have them pay $75,000, gut the system, which they'd have to pay me to do, and then pay another $25,000 to modify it to do what they wanted. It just made no sense. There's all kinds of things that are in the Nevada system that make no sense for the dream tag. I can give you a host of examples. I mean, we could spend an hour on it, but eligibility checking isn't done. There's no social security numbers. You have the ability of having multiple choices. You have uh, uh, multiple purchases where now that rejects in the Nevada system. You have a fee structure that isn't the same. As an example, you might have one ticket for $5, but you might be able to buy 11 tickets for $50. That's very typical with lotteries. So anyway, um, what we did is we built a from scratch system and we did it on the come for the uh, operational fees for Bear River with the proviso that we'd own that, survivor, that software when we were done. If you looked at it, you would not believe that it is the same software that was written for Nevada. It has very little to do with it other than they're both draws. And I'm gonna diverge here for just a second and talk about that issue. I had an interesting conversation with an attorney at one point and he pointed out to me that someone can't take the book Moby Dick and change, take the electronic version and change Ishmael in it to uh, Gerald and create a new work therefrom. It's still Moby Dick. On the other hand, Moby Dick and Free Willy are both about whales, but nobody would believe that Free Willy was stolen from the author of, of Moby Dick. And that's kind of the situation we have here. Um, this software we wrote for Bear River is actually a very good fit for the dream tag uh, and, and would be my starting point if we were to uh, be 
selected either through a bid process or however. I was asked again this year, because apparently the dream tag came up again in the legislature, if I would be willing to continue to do it on a uh, on the come basis where we would do whatever upfront development costs were necessary and recover our fees through the operational process. And I said I would stand by my word. I said before I would do it, and I would still do it. I've been asked why I'd be willing to do that, and I'll just say very frankly, to me it's a competitive issue in terms of remaining competitive in my business. It has nothing to do with my support or opposition of the bill, same as the things I've been asked to implement by this commission and prior commissions within the system. I'm a hired gun, I get asked if I'll do something for money, and I do it for money. It isn't because I agree or disagree with the approach. So anyway, that's the background, that's the history of how I got involved in this. I don't have a lock on the outcome. Um, I feel like I'm very competitive. Uh, most of my competitors have more knowledge about license systems and less knowledge about draw systems, and I feel we're, we're a little bit ahead there. But I may not be, end up being the one that does the software. But if I do, it will not be Nevada software. It'll be the Re Bear River Refuge will be my starting point. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point. I'd just like to throw out, um, well, first, thank you for showing up. And, you know, my 43rd reading of the agenda would have put, uh, may provide a brief report. <laughs> One of those things. <laughs> but uh, appreciate you giving the report. It's very informative. Um, so my main thing is, is it is practical. It could be done through process. OK, excellent. Go ahead. I had a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Don, no, I, I think that uh, you'd be a good fit for the draw. I just wanted to, and I'm glad you clarified up you know, the difference between Nevada's draw and what mm -hmm. they would want. And it's sort of up to them to pick whoever they want to do the drawing. It's not it's not a commission action the way I the way I see the way the bill's written, and so that's not up to us. But it would be I'm glad you explained it, it would be up to us if, if it involved Nevada's draw system and you know you're 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 a hired gun and you do it whatever you want that we don't have any concern over that unless it was involved in Nevada's program, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, I'm glad you clarified that for the commission, everybody in the public. Uh, well, I think it's a fair question. I mean, I'm not disputing yep. the question. You always have really good answers to questions. Um. Why is that? Okay. <laughs> Rhetorical question. Anybody else? I can't answer that question. Like <laughs> I say. There you go. <laughs> on the phone, do we have any questions on this? I hear nothing on the phone, therefore, we must not have any questions. All right. I'm Anthony here in Vegas. All right. Mr. Pearl. <laughs> yeah, there are a number of, uh, and, and again, as it's been pointed out already, probably should move on to something else, but there are a number of other sticky issues uh, with respect to this particular section in, in uh, 502. As a, for instance, it's one thing for Don to work on the IFCOM basis, you know, because he knows he has a, He's a businessman and has a pretty good idea of whether or not uh, uh, what's being proposed can be that he can accomplish it and whether his chances of being repaid are are there and that's a that's a decision that a businessman makes one of the other parts of this law though requires the way I read it that uh, this nonprofit or whoever runs this program for the raffle has to prepay for the tags it's one thing for a business to go on the IFCOM. It's another thing for the state or a state agency to go on the IFCOM for those tags. And that's another one of the issues that I think has, has some concerns and may have been one of the reasons why any regulatory action on this has been held up. Uh, and there are other, there's some other little things in here too that are a problem. Maybe we get systems to free by the tax. <laughs> <laughs> this might uh, give a lot of liars a lot of work, is the way it looks. Imagine that. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out, Don. As always, you clarify things right, right well for us. And uh, hopefully, Judy will uh, be kind. Still laughing on that one. Okay. Item number 16, <coughs> Legislative Committee Report and Actions. Commissioner Capurro, Commissioner will hear a report from the Legislative Committee. 
Yes, sir. Uh, for the record, Daryl Capurro, Chairman of the Legislative Committee of the Commission. I'd like to ask Kim Jolly to come up to go through this. Uh, she's had the burden of, especially the last few days. You understand that yesterday <clears throat> is the last day for bills that don't have an exemption, fiscal exemption, to come out of the initiating house. So if it's an assembly bill, it had to come out of the assembly yesterday by the time they, they adjourned. Um, they hadn't even caught up because I am on the Nellis system and I checked that at least three or four times a day. And I checked it last night at about 11 o'clock and they still weren't caught up with the uh, reporting on how these bills went. So there were a number of issues that were dealt with that we have an interest in that were dealt with in the last few days. There are two or three that are going to be upcoming in both next week and perhaps the following week. So it's, it's kind of a work in progress. You have to understand that uh, things move fast in, in the legislative environment. And in fact, even though they have a rule that says they have to give three days notice, you know, like you and us and, and all the boards and commissions have to do, well, that doesn't necessarily mean the legislature has to follow their own rule. And they don't many times because they will add a bill to an agenda that wasn't published for three days. So it's you just got to keep your eyes on it. And, and as Kim can, can and will tell you, it is not easy to keep up, uh, uh, keep up with what's going on, as well as I'm sure Mr. Mayor would also advise you that that's the case. And uh, sometimes it's uh, uncomfortable to walk into the kind of situation that you have to deal with too, because you're not exactly sure quote, where the bodies are buried or what's going on. So um, with that, I'd, I'd actually like to have Kim. Well, now, is that getting into item 17? I, I mean, think we should take them both together, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We'll take 16 and 17. So I kind of like to hear what the committee did, and then, because, I mean, then, then we understanding that that's Because some of this has already historical. been acted on, so I think okay. know, it's, it's, it's kind of got to flow together. Uh, some of these bills have either died already or, or they have already been passed by one house. So okay, so we'll take items 16 be and 17 concurrently. Yes, sir. That would be good on that. All right. Is that all right with you, Kim? Sure. Let me just, I'm just pulling it up here. Some of these bills I don't even remember. AB 13, I mean, that was like 670 assembly bills ago. <laughs> Kim Jolly, for the record, and our staff. What I'll do is, um, so that the cabs and people in the other locations can follow along, I'm just going to go off of the bill list that we had posted on the website. Um, and some of them, uh, since they've been posted on the website, I'm no longer tracking. So, um, and some I've added. So that's just how it goes. Uh, so I'll start at the beginning, uh, just in alphabetical order. Uh, Assembly Bill 13, this is an endow bill, and uh, it was, yesterday was the deadline, and it was finally in, uh, put on a work session, and if you have any specific questions, Rob attended that work session late yesterday evening, um, but they did amend and approve the bill. They explain, actually explain what that bill is. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. That bill, if you guys will remember, it's the child firearm statute and uh, juvenile juvenile poaching penalties suggestions that we have. You've heard it. You heard it in March and you heard it in May, um, and it's the part that would give peace officers flexibility as to whether they would take into custody someone that was a child that had a firearm um, violation, for instance, a plugged fire, uh, plug shotgun. So they did, so what they did is they amended the language back to the original BDR that we submitted. It didn't come out like that because LCB tinkered with it, but they went back to that. So now it says an officer may take into custody instead of shall. 
and from what I understand, the the rest of the bill, the juvenile poaching guidelines, did didn't get amended. So that's been approved, and it'll be on to the assembly floor sometime next week or week after. The next deadline, just so you know, is April 26th for things to get out of the first house. So if they're assembly bills, they have to get out of the assembly floor. If they're Senate bills, they have to get out of the Senate floor, or else they die if they're not exempt. The next one is AB 19, the another endow bill, the interstate boundary waters only fishing license that is a morph of the previous Colorado River fishing license and then also expanding the special fishing permit that did get approved several weeks ago and uh, it it's on assembly the full assembly's general file agenda for this coming Monday and general file is the third reading so that'll be the last part of that house and that was amended or that was approved without any amendments um, next one is AB 37 this the Commission didn't take any action on it's just a um, the hours that things will be open and they amended and passed that and the only amendment was that if an agency closes hours for instance if they only have one person working and they want to close for lunch they just have to post that on their door 30 days before they do it and keep it up there so that would be something that would probably be useful for some of the end out rural locations where there are only one person working Kim are they gonna accept um, amendments like for our fish hatchery and those situations that that's in a different bill that's for the 410 work week bill but I will get to that one um, AB 64 is the truancy bill that the Commission hadn't taken action on yet the legislative committee at the their last meeting did vote to um, suggest exempt or removing the revocation of hunting or fishing licenses and um, that hasn't been heard in work session it's not exempt so unless the sponsor gets a waiver for exemption it, it's my understanding that it's dead because it didn't get out of committee yesterday the bill itself. right but section 22 was the section that caused us the, the problem about uh, uh, taking away the hunting license of a parent mm -hmm. for the actions of a child and I'm sorry I'm not going to go over the whole part of the bill if you have questions feel free to ask me um, but all the bill texts are online on our website um, the next bill is AB 159 it's public records and uh, that was not heard in work session by yesterday so it's not exempt and it's my understanding that it's dead the next one on the list is AB 167 the aquatic invasive species bill that has been declared exempt um, however it already got out of assembly uh, natural resources committee and it was uh, amended and sent uh, they got out of that committee and it was referred to ways and means we have a hearing uh, this coming Tuesday morning at 730 to discuss that that's the one that was amended to put a cap on the fee if the Commission were to set a fee up to ten dollars for um, the aquatic invasive species purposes um, and then it cha the amendment changed the felony provision so that it was a tiered system so the first time it'd be a misdemeanor a regular misdemeanor and the second time it would be a felony does this so, have the uh, post fee increase in it is this available no right this is the aquatic just specific to the AIS program um, that the boat bill kind of died yeah. so it never got heard and it, the governor's office we could not support it so rather than oppose it we just had it pulled so um, next bill is AB 217 this is uh, probably a lot of hunters are following this one it was just a cleanup on gun sales law across state lines so that it would um, be more in line with federal law and that has been passed and approved on the assembly floor we just feel like that's going to help with Pittman Robertson money because as we all know excise taxes uh, when they go up that's good for us um, AB 307 is an energy bill that was heard in work session yesterday and it was 
amended without recommendation and referred to ways and means and um, obviously because of the fees as an executive agency we have concerns the fees are problematic because of the governor's policy on fees um, Department of Energy and the Department of Wildlife would be required to work together to um, implement this program and we still have some concerns about how the money would be used that it does not include assessment of projects which is our major number one thing that we are struggling with and that's needed so we, we understand from the author that when it gets to the Senate side that that would be a time when they would be adding that amendment so I'm not really sure how how much further it's gonna go because it's very complex and there wasn't a lot of they're, they're all kind of iffy on it the industry did support it though so uh, AB 329 this is the bill Can by I'm yes I'm sorry so did it pass out of assembly or it, what's the term so it made it past the deadline okay okay it is exempt so it didn't matter okay. but it's a con they amended it but without recommendation to pass or not so and they referred it to ways and means so that means they wanted to clean it up enough with the amendments suggested by the energy industry but they're referring it to the money committee so we'll let you know how that goes um, and I'll post the amended things on our website so you guys can read them um, Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. AB 322, the commission slash dream tag bill we were just talking about. Um, this was passed out of natural resources and passed on the assembly floor. So there's still a couple of steps to go with that. Um, AB 329, this is Assemblyman Goykachia's bill that inserts the definition of wildlife into water law and it includes that barrel horses are not wildlife um, this was approved yesterday out of assembly government affairs so uh, it has to go to the assembly floor now so it wasn't amended or anything so that's all good uh, AB 342 this is a newspaper notice reco not required which costs a lot of money for governments to do so now uh, that has been it's not exempt as far as I know. It, did, it had no action by yesterday. So my understanding is it's dead. 347, AB 347, this is a deer tag bill. Um, it's eligible for exemption, but it's not declared exempt. So, uh, and there was no, there hasn't been a hearing on it. There, it was scheduled and then it got pulled from hearing um, and there was no action yesterday. So um, that's that. Uh, AB 378, this is the carcass bill, as we call it, for um, the carcass of a bill could be processed uh, and, and sent to a nonprofit for meat. And uh, that was exempt or eligible for exemption, but not declared exempt. And they had no action yesterday. So my understanding is it's dead. And the author actually told us he didn't want to pursue it. So. Well, there were a lot of issues that were brought up that are a big concern uh, yes. from a public safety and health standpoint. Right. Okay. Um, so then, where are we at? AB 402, credit cards must be accepted unless impracticable. Um, this was amended and passed and not really substantial amendments. And although we we have we don't accept them now, we plan to accept them, and this is just going to put a little more clarity on it. The the, the privacy law is going to make is going to cost quite a bit of money to comply with. However, um, AB 403, this uh, the commission should be interested in because um, the temporary regs that have been submitted and already approved. This would make it so that um, permanent regs would not have to be reheard by the legislative commission. And specifically listed in the bill was the bear hunt temporary reg. So um, my understanding is that's able to skip that process of going to the legislative commission. Because after we get something approved here from you, we have to go to the, that commission and they don't meet 
very much. That was the only, there, there were a number of agencies that were included in that particular provision, but I was a little unsure in reading it uh, uh, about which, because I hadn't checked it back against our numbers and that, but that is the bear mm -hmm. hunt regulation. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is, is that that would not have to be reheard as by a, the legislative commission. By the legislative right. commission, it's I'm we, would, we would have to rehear it as a permanent regulation, but it would not have to go to the legislative commission. Maureen is gone. That's what I was asking her if we. But this only pertains to the legislative commission, so I would think yes. And I'm. It's unclear to me whether or not this bill would make it so that all temporary regs, regardless of whether they're in the bill, wouldn't have to be heard. But I would think so. This. That's how it was prior to 2009 um, so that would be great my concern was that they were very specific about which ones in the bill so I don't mm -hmm. know unless they amended it. it seems to me like it may just apply to those specific numbers but maybe we'll, yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll, find, we'll out. find out yeah okay um, AB 419 is a groundwater bill that was amended <laughs> and passed and it's on the assembly floor uh, AB 474 the Sunset Commission would be created to review boards and commissions. Um, it was amended and passed, and uh, it'll be on to the assembly floor. Uh, AB 478. Does, does uh -huh. that have any wildlife implications, really? All or? boards and commissions would be reviewed. Okay. Um, this is similar to what they have in other states where there's a sunset commission that reviews eight um, boards and commissions, and it just reviews because there are several well probably more than several commissions or small advisory commissions and boards that aren't statutory or regulatory required they're just executive order or just by let's do it and they cost money and so this will be reviewing those and I understand uh, for instance this board would be requested to prepare um, a report by the sunset commission outlining what you do why how is it required by statute and so on so. I also believe they're going to look at all the subcommittees as well right we've been requested to provide that information okay so the next one this is AB 479 that our director was asking about Assemblywoman Debbie Smith's bill for um, changing all state agencies work schedule to four 10 work weeks 10 hour days Monday through Thursday Although not in the bill, in her presentation, she's indicated that it would she would want it to be 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. within one hour lunch for all agencies, without um, uh, different layering of schedules. For instance, everyone would be seven to six, rather than some people being six to four to kind of stagger the work days. There is an exemption ability for public safety health and welfare um, yesterday they had the first hearing for that and we testified that this would affect we would like an exemption for fish hatcheries because we have people that are there 24 7 on rotating coverage for the hatcheries to feed the fish and so on so um, and that's not covered in the exemption so it's AB 479 right? uh-huh right and that's not on your list that's no that's one that I added um, since the time that I posted on the website. So. And, and what about AB uh, 359 and AB 370? It was on the first sheet. Mm -hmm. I removed those. Okay, they're gone. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. I removed those. And they were gone because they. They were not relevant anymore to me, to our agency for impact. There, There are others that were more relevant so we're trying to keep it down because it is so tough to make sure to track this stuff um, a B we're at 503 right so we're at 503 a B 503 is this conservation fee bill that would amend the conservation the habitat conservation fee that was uh, amended and passed out of committee on April 14th and it is eligible for exemption so that's on to the floor it may go to ways and means actually it will it'll be referred to ways and means because of the fee so 
the next one, this is a new one that I added, AB 522. This is a... 525. Well, no, I'm, before that one, I'm adding one. AB 522 is a new, is a bill that was introduced on April 11th. And um, it's a question one bond reauthorization bill. So this was, we added this, Suzanne sent this out to the cabs and it's been added since the posting to the website. Um, but it's just a reauthorization and this affects wildlife because we get like $20 million from question one and that's gonna expire in June. So this would reauthorize that bond. Ken was there and testified that question one is, we're supportive of that. This is declared exempt, so it's still alive. Um, kind of a surprise, actually, because we were working with DCNR, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, and thought this was dead and it was not coming back, and then it just showed up. So, um, and then we go to AB 525. This is our one of our budget bills, Wildlife Trust Fund account. It's exempt. It'll have its first hearing on Assembly Ways and Means on Tuesday at 7.30. Um, AB 560, this is just a bill that we're tracking because it affects state employees. Um, and that's exempt. Uh, ACR 3, the Sage Grouse Protection Resolution. This was approved in Natural Resources and it's uh, it's a resolution and it got referred to Senate Natural Resources, but it didn't go to the floor. So I guess with this resolution, they don't have to necessarily go in whatever order. That's alive. Um, SB 40 is the next bill. It's a <coughs> public works bill and it was heard in Senate Government Affairs and amended <coughs> with a substantial amendment um, it pertains to state agencies having to be required to comply with things. Um, next bill is SB 56, the do it bill. It's not exempt. It had no action by yesterday, so as far as I know, it's dead unless the sponsor gets a waiver. So, so Kim, is mm -hmm. SB 40 dead? No, S SB 40 was amended and passed. Okay. So, and, and that does, does have significant. Uh, ramifications does and how the wording comes out. right and we're still our engineer is very concerned but patrick and bob and i are reviewing that and it may not be much new for us um next bill is senate bill 102 the shit antler bill that was amended and approved the um, the uh amendments um were to remove all the fees per the governor's office because of the position on fees. So that means that no one will be required to pay a fee to shed antler hunt. However, it does provide authority to this commission to regulate shed hunting through regulation like we do with other things. It was also amended to be, uh, a, an amendment was added for civil penalties for big game poaching to provide judges with guidelines on how to fine um, poachers because we have some of the lowest civil penalty fines around. That was approved by the Senate on April, the full Senate on April 14th. Do I have any questions from the caps? No, okay. SB 226, the trapping bill, this was heard yesterday for work session. 108 is dead. It's oh yes, I'm sorry. SB 108, the boat fee bill is dead. Um, next is the SB 226, the trapping bill. It was heard yesterday in Nat Senate Natural Resources and it was amended and passed. The amendment was substantial and it pretty much gutted the, the requirement, but it was a resolution type bill. And so, and it, the commission will receive a strongly worded letter from that committee that if the issue is not fixed, they will fix it next session. So I will get that. That's that's online, I believe. The the full mock-up isn't isn't necessarily together, but I'll get that for you guys and send it to you. That was a very interesting hearing, by the way. Yes, it was. Um, so next is SB two eighty seven. 
it's a it's more like a resolution that opposes the Mount Wilson Table Mountain uh, wind project uh, because it affects sage grouse it was amended and passed however um, they did have a suggestion that it be a resolution instead of a bill and I don't know if Lincoln County's on the line but Senator Lee made a point he almost didn't vote for it because he said Lincoln County needs to get on board and with other energy projects to help that county become more self-sufficient and no one from Lincoln County was there so NACO was there so they heard that message um, Kim actually they did speak but you recall the end of the public comment. oh yeah a after the hearing um, Connie Simpkins and somebody else spoke and they were just answering questions but I haven't I didn't hear any real like response to his comment but the they were asking questions about would if they were to move the location of the power project would they have to restart the EIS and Connie Simpkins answered that they have not even started the EIS so that there's no restarting to do so um anyway so that may turn up as a resolution in another committee sb 359 this is a contracting bill that would require agencies to or the con the contractors that agencies deal with to um go under certain stipulations uh this is exempt so it hasn't had any action so it's still live um I think is this this may be a new one for you I don't know SB 438 was that on my previous list mm -hmm. yeah. okay um, this is a <clears throat> Tahoe environmental impact EIP the Tahoe EIP funding it's exempt and it was passed out of Senate Government Affairs this affects us because we have staff that work on this project they get funding from this SB 446 um, this is a bill for the consolidation of DCNR and it's exempt I was it it's been heard but there was no action and I was checking this because if you did someone leave the call oh well Las Vegas is still here okay um, because if you look at the end of this bill it talks about the dream tag advisory board and the cabs and the Commission should note that it removes the resource advisory board as a appointee as a member and replaces it with the director of DCNR. So, interesting choice. Um, the SCR1 is the working group resolution. Senate Natural Resources is scheduled to hear it April 20th. Uh, SCR4 is a multiple use uh, bill. It was passed out of Senate Natural Resources and the full Senate. Um, and second to the last one, SJR5, is uh, the expresses opposition to wild horse management. It was amended and adopted, and it's out of Senate Natural Resources. Um, and the last one I have, this was added later on. Uh, Senate Joint Resolution 12 expresses opposition to the designation of public lands as wild lands. This was heard yesterday and passed out of committee. Um, it should be noted that the federal, as Commissioner Capurro said, the federal government defunded Wildlands Project anyway. So this is, I guess the resolution worked. <laughs> so that's all I have for status. Um, and the commission, as I understand, can take positions on any of the bills that we've discussed. Please. So. The ones that we've already that the